Welcome back to the KX Developer demo. We're now going to look at functions within Developer. So the first thing we're going to do is go into dev.functions here and we're going to open up this function called speed. Um, if you were to create a new function, you could just right click here, new and create the function there and you'll just give it a name. Um, once you create the function, you can enter these pieces of documentation here. So the file overview just gives a brief um, description of what the function does and then the param values are the inputs that go into the function. Returns is what you would expect the function to return. <clears throat> then you just define your function and then you'll see here that if we run over to here, um, if we go over to our scratchpad, once we hover over the name of the function that will actually give us a little summary of the documentation that we have written at the top of the function so that's really really handy for um, new members of the team and just keeping your, your documentation up to date. So once we've created a function like speed we need to be able to test it and how we do that is we use um, what is known as cucumber and the function itself would be called speed.cuke. So if we open up this speed function, um, the syntax here can look a little bit daunting the first couple of times you see it. Um, so I just want to point out to you that if you go into help here and then into developer user guide, if you scroll down to testing on the left hand side here and then into Cucumber, it's documented really, really well here with plenty of examples um, and explains through each of the, each of the text blocks. Um, just to make it a little bit clearer what each part is doing. So I'll give you a little overview of what we've done here for this speed um, test. So in the before section here, we have written this little test.speed, and this is really what, um, what we expect the function uh, that we're testing to return. Um, it's defining it so that we can, we can compare it to the function that we're going to test it against. Um, in this expect block here, we've given a little edge case. So this is exactly um, the exact numbers that we would expect to come out. Um, and then this property value at the bottom here. So this one is um, if uh, this is a little bit more generic. So this just puts in any integer and any float. And it says that we should um, that the speed function should return exactly the same as what our test.speed returns as well. Okay, so if we want to run this test, we come over to speed.kick, we hit, we right click, we come to code and we hit run tests. And you'll see in the console here that both tests have failed. Um, so if we pop over to our scratch pad here, um, what we want to do is um, really see what's going on. So what we're going to do is right click where this where um, the speed function is running and hit quick debugger. And this will take us into our debug function and it will step through the function running it again and it will tell you where um, this type error that has been run here that has been thrown. Um, it'll show you exactly where that's been thrown. So we can see here this looks this just looks like a typo. So let's go back into our scratch pad and into our function. And we can see this here is just a typo. So let's just remove that and um, control S to save the function. And you'll see here that when something's been modified, um, there's a little M beside it, which means that you need to push it back up to get if, if, that's, um, if you want to keep your repository up to date. So we updated the speed function now. Um, let's just run it in our scratch pad to see that it doesn't throw any errors. So now we're getting a, a, res, uh, a result back, which is good. Um, and then we'll just run the speed function again, or the speed test again, sorry. So into code and run tests, and all two, pass, all two tests have now passed. Another thing that we can do with developer is profiling. Um, so really, if we want to see, um, if we want to investigate memory use within the, within nested functions, um, we can use our profile for that. So if I copy over um, these nested functions from the scratch pad here, um, I'm going to just step through these and define them. 
identify each of these functions. So there's three functions, and then then being nested within this dot example dot foo function. So then if I want to see to get a bit more information on on how this function is performing, I can right click um, and I can profile. So if I just hit execute here, you'll see that it just gives me a table of information about um, about how long um, each each function is taking. It will also give you average time, min time, max time, etc. Um, and you can do it in different ways. So if I want to look at um, TMC, this is going to give me a tree. Now you can execute this. It take a little minute. Okay, so this has come back and it's given us a picture of um, which of the uh, functions within our function has taken the longest time. So the, it starts at the top and the biggest circle is the function that took the biggest time. So if you click on that, it shows you that um, example dot actually long took the longest time and space as well. So it's got the biggest dot here. Then the other ones you can't really see, they're a lot smaller, um, but you can see that they took a lot less time and a lot less space. Okay, let's go back to our training. So now that we have our speed function working successfully, what we can do is update um, the trips table with our speed function to work out um, to work out the speed of each of the journeys. So if I run this line, just make this a little bit clearer. This line's doing. Um, so it's updating the column speed. And using the speed function to do that and it's overriding the table speed or the table trips to do that so if we run this line it will execute that and display the table for us um just for ease if we click meta trips we'll be able to see that it has created this speed uh column at the bottom of the table as well so if we scroll up we should be able to see that at the end of the table there we go Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is have a look at plotting um, the data that we've just created. So we're going to use the speed and we're going to plot a line chart. So if we scroll down to this here, this is using our grammar of graphics um, library. And um, this geo here uh, stands for graphical output. So um, this uh, line part here is is using the pickup time as the x-axis and the speed as the y-axis and then we're just setting a color so if we run this uh you can just use the the play button to actually play this and display the bottom uh display the line to display the um the last line of the execution um and you can see here that um some of these speeds are really really high and uh, look like they are outliers um, so we can investigate this a little bit further we've created these two um, plot functions so if we go into our functions again and we have a look at plot speed per vendor you'll see that this is the same um, syntax as what's used in the the graph we just looked at except that we are selecting trips where the vendor is uh, the value that we're passing in so if we have another look <clears throat> at um, this, what we can do is we'll just copy this over to our scratch pad and the, we'll run these individually. So um, plot speed per vendor for the CMT render. We can see here that this looks like these are the outliers um, because the speed is uh, all the way up here. Um, and then if we look at the DDS vendor, all of the speeds are between zero and sort of 60, 70 
Um, so let's, it, this one looks okay. So if we want to look a little bit further at the CMT vendor, then what we can do is just use this, um, is just is use this code here to try and um, see what's going on where the speed was in excess of 200 miles per hour. So if we run this line, go back to our console. Um, yeah, so we can see that some of the durations actually are zero, which is going to cause a problem for the speeds. Um, yeah, so that's going to cause a problem when we're calculating the speed. So what we're going to do is um, just remove these from our data. We're removing um, any trips where the duration is less than a minute. <clears throat> and then let's have a look at what that looks like. So um, we're going to overlay this with um, the average speed limit, which is 25 miles per hour, and um, the upper speed limit, which is 55 miles per hour. And you'll see these are put in with this um, H line uh, function at the bottom here. So let's run that. So you can see this overlaid now with um, with the maximum speed limit, which is the red line, and the average, which is the green line. Um, and then we can still see that the, the speed limit has been broken a good few times um, th throughout the duration of these trips. So what we're going to do is create this last um, little plot here. And um, we're going to use this to look at uh, to look at where the map has been, where on the map these um, speeding trips occurred. So if we go to open image for saving, you'll see here that um, this is where the trips started, um, and the bigger the circle, the higher the speed limit the higher the speed that broke the speed limit was. So that was the last of what I wanted to show you today. If you um, want to have a look at the grammar graphics in further detail, you can go to help and user guide and down to um, grammar of graphics and introduction. And there's plenty of examples there as well that you can have a look through. So in conclusion, um, today we looked over um, importing data we created functions, we used, we checked um, if our functions were working with tests, we used our debuggers um, and our testing frameworks that come out of the box with developer. And finally, we plotted the data using our grammar of graphics. Everything is documented in our developer user guide. Um, and thanks for your time today.